solo board gaming night here, and tonight I'm going to pose a question. What makes video game IPs so different than board game IPs? Believe it or not, I've been alive long enough to have lived and suffered through playing E.T. the Extraterrestrial back in the Atari days. Then after that, I was unlucky enough to be very excited to get my hands on the Terminator. We all know how that went. And as an X-Men fan, I couldn't wait to be able to play as Wolverine. In the video game world, we've received games like Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade's Revenge. However, in the board game world, we've received masterpieces like Marvel Champions and even Marvel Legendary. Both games have been well thought out and lovingly crafted. For every money grab that has been given to us like Bram Stoker's Dracula or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the NES and Sega Genesis respectively, we've received amazing and beautiful experiences like Horrified in the board game space. That doesn't mean it was all bad. I remember playing Buster's Hidden Treasure on the Sega Genesis and Dick Tracy. Those games absolutely blew me out of the water. And then Aladdin, it looked so much like a cartoon, I just couldn't believe it at the time. And let's not forget GoldenEye 007 on the Nintendo 64. And then later on, Riddick and Escape from Butcher Bay on the PS3. Both of those games blew me away when they came out. To get to the good games, we've had to make our way through horrible games like Batman Returns for the Sega Genesis, as well as its sequel, Batman Forever. Can you imagine? I actually received that for my birthday one day. That's not to say that board games have been flawless either. There have been a few duds, but for the most part, not nearly as many as in the video game space. Growing up, we never really received a great alien game. I mean, there were a few good ones like Alien Isolation. But now, for example, we received board games like Alien Fate of the Nostrobo that absolutely capture the look and feel of the Alien franchise. I still remember watching the commercials for the Back to the Future game that was going to be released on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I was so excited to play it, and I couldn't believe how let down I was when I finally did play it. Then the Sega Genesis announced Back to the Future 3, and I just remember thinking how excited a next generation version of the movie would be, only to have my hopes completely dashed at the poor quality, terrible gameplay, and all around ugly look of that game. Thankfully, today, I can relive my favorite moments in Back to the Future. The board games created nowadays have been fantastic, well-made, and you could tell a true labor of love. Even franchises like the Fast and the Furious have received poorly made adaptions in video game form. However, their board game counterparts have managed to capture the look and feel of the movie in ways that the video game can only hope for. Even amazing video games of yesteryear like Space Invaders have received homages in board game form like Under Falling Skies, which happened to recreate the Space Invader vibe in ways that once was thought impossible. In closing, how amazing is it that even though at one point IPs were almost a for sure terrible thing to invest in, has now all of a sudden in the board game realm become something completely viable, something you can trust and at the very least have fun with. Which game did you play as a kid growing up that had terrible movie tie-ins? On the flip side, which board games have you recently played that have an amazing movie tie-in and capture the look and feel of the franchise? This has been Solo Board Gaming Night. I really do hope you enjoyed this conversation and I hope you guys have a great game night.